I hope you can see my screen and you yeah. can hear me. Yeah, everything is okay. Fine. <clears throat> so, um, okay, I need to switch it off. So, um, Today, uh, I would like to talk about uh, Ansible based operator using uh, operator SDK. Um, why uh, I, I pick up this topic? Because it fits well into the current trend that I will uh, discuss later on. Uh, and I had a chance to uh, create a small Ansible based operator some time ago because I uh, felt like the lack of the tool that um, should help me fix the problem. And so obviously the first step um, or the first part of the presentation is just a brief explanation of what I'm going to talk about. What are the topics uh, that I will cover? So first um, is simply an explanation of what is Kubernetes operator. Um, I will try to explain it um, for those who are not familiar with um, basic so this will include also basics of kubernetes and where uh, this kubernetes operator fits into the kubernetes ecosystem because that was the first question that i asked myself uh, in the past um, how it's different from like well-known basic resources deployment or stateful sets and um, so why we would need to use uh, Kubernetes operator, why we don't need to use like typical deployment on stateful set. And then uh, we will go um, to topics like technical perspective on the operator, um, how it works, uh, what, are, what are the important key points about um, this solution, um then we will move on to operator sdk which is the tool uh, that what i would like to um explain uh, as the key point of this presentation with the focus on ansible based operator um i'm not sure if here are like go developers i'm not a go developer i know um at least what from what I know, uh, writing Kubernetes operator in Go is quite difficult thing, uh, even for like uh, Go programmers, because of the complexity of uh, Kubernetes API. Mm, moreover, um, the, the, the good point about it is just an Ansible, which is well-known tool by DevOps engineers. So it fits well into like the skill set that we have. And then finally, I will um, provide a quick start uh, how we can use Ansible and Operator SDK uh, to uh, create um, basic um, Ansible-based operator. And finally, I will um, give you or I will uh, make a summary why I think this is quite important nowadays because um, for those who are already familiar with, with this term, a Kubernetes operator is nothing new. It was uh, invented or introduced by CoreOS. Um, I'm not sure six or five years ago. Now CoreOS is uh, owned by Red Hat. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I'm going to um, provide uh, at the end of this presentation. So, uh, what is Kubernetes operator? Um, operator uh is uh op op represents human operational knowledge in a software and uh, that you want to incorporate into a kubernetes so kubernetes um is called a cloud operating system right and it solves problems like automation uh it mm, decreases the complexity of automation and basically it makes this thing very easy to uh, implement and Operator is an answer to like the complex applications that you would like to manage in like native Kubernetes way. This is what Kubernetes operator handles. So uh, it uh, manages the application in reliable way 
and ensure that uh, like the desired state uh, is accomplished by Kubernetes. Kubernetes operator also gives you um, different methods to package, to deploy, and to manage um, those kind of applications in Kubernetes. That is not part of this presentation. Um, there is a dedicated tool uh, to uh, do that. Uh, it's called uh, OLM, but you can easily create Ansible-based operator without this tool. So let's say that's um, not part of this presentation. And the one uh, super important key point for those who are like beginners in Kubernetes, or at least had a chance to like use it a little bit, um, there is a high chance that if you ever use Kubernetes, then most likely you had a chance to use an operator, but most likely you are not aware of it. So Kubernetes um, implements and automates uh, common activities. So those activities are like divided into two groups. This is how like official documentation explains that. So activities like day one, installation, configuration, and basic things to, um, to run application on Kubernetes. And then there are there is a second group of activities that it also helps in uh, doing. So this is reconfiguration, updating, backup, file over, and restore. And those kind of things operator helps you in um, in, in solving. So the first thing um, which you can ask yourself if you haven't be familiar with with this term is how uh, is it different from a typical uh, deployment um, in, in Kubernetes. So for those who are not familiar with deployment, deployment is like the best way um, to deploy pods on Kubernetes, especially when it comes to a stateless application. Um, and the goal of deployment is just to uh, ensure that the application is healthy, the application responds to the requests in a correct way. Um, Kubernetes monitors this application and ensures that the desired state of your like um, deployment object is achieved. And under the hood, there is another object which is replica set. And so if you don't know, um, replica set simply is um, like a configuration of the pod and the deployment object ensures that you can uh, roll back it easily, you can version it because replica set defines like the version of the configuration. And if you want to, if you change like the configuration of uh, deployment object, in fact, under the hood, you create new replica set. So uh, if you roll back deployment, basically you apply the previous replica set. So that um, that um, gives like uh, th that is somehow hierarchy in Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is uh, built uh, in the hierarchy of different objects. So on on the bottom you have pod, then you then up you have um, replica set deployments. And if we are talking about some such hierarchy, then um, operator is on the top. It's very close to deployment, but it's more to manage um, complex and um, uh, generic applications. Um, but there, there is a common thing between those two. Um, both leverages something which is con called um, controller. So uh, that's a pro programming pattern. Uh, that's uh, a code that uh, ensures uh, or transition cluster into a desired state. So that's the core function of the deployment and uh, and any uh, Kubernetes um, component that leverages controller. And if we are talking about a controller, then uh, we should uh, say something about control loop. Um, so control loop is divided into like three stages, right? So before we go into that, we, you need to be aware, or you know it already, that you, you create a Kubernetes manifest. In that way, you define like the desired state. You want to have the application in this state. 
Then Kubernetes uh, does everything to achieve this state thanks to the control loop that is divided into these three uh, stages. So it observes um, the state uh, all the time. It makes a difference between the current state and the desired state. If something is wrong, if uh, the state, uh, if there is a difference between those two states, then it acts uh, and fix the problem. This is how it works uh, control loop. This is how it works uh, deployment. And this is how it works um, Kubernetes operator. So uh, going uh, further, um, how is it different from a deployment? So deployment, uh, sorry, Kubernetes operator can be treated as a generic resource similar to deployment, but it's great to manage complex applications. Uh, or you can also think about it as a thing that uh, helps in managing um, generic applications. So if we are talking about generic application, means that there must be something that helps you define um like the state of the generous application this is what i will um, explain in, in like the next slide but um, going back to to this topic um kubernetes operators um uh, helps in managing complex application that leverage different basic resources like pods config maps so you can think about it like the application that manages or creates different other like basic Kubernetes resources. So it includes uh, config maps, pods, as I said, and everything that you can imagine. Because um, basically, um, it, this is uh, an advanced logic that depends on, on the resources, even third party resources. So um, you can manage the state of something that is based on the API in AWS, whatever. And the thing, uh, what, what is clue about the Kubernetes operator, I've mentioned that already. So it encodes and automates ops knowledge. And that's a proactive approach because if you have uh, an application uh, and you um, get, go to, get an alert that something is wrong, then uh, you need to fix it. In in this term, for this term, you just need to um, install the operator and Kubernetes handles this logic uh, for you. Uh, so I, I, I'm not saying that Kubernetes operator is a great thing for uh, for any kind of workload. It fits well into like uh, stateful apps um, area where um, the complexity is the management of, of the state. If the thing is about like the basic status application, I think it's better to use deployment or replica set. Previously, I, I mentioned something about like generic way and um, here is an explanation of, of that. So for those who are not uh, familiar with Kubernetes, um, I will explain what is uh, custom resource definition. Um, so uh, CRD, is some kind of extension to Kubernetes API. So Kubernetes API provides objects like um, service, right? Like uh, replica set, like um, um, deployment. But what if you want to have an own object? So then um, here comes another thing, which is called custom resource definition. You can create it and in that way you can extend the Kubernetes API. Translating this uh, into uh, object-oriented programming language, CRD is some kind of class. And if you want to create an instance of this class, you create simply um, a custom resource. And that's an object of custom resource definition. And uh, most likely uh, you haven't knew that, or uh, if you are experienced in Kubernetes, you, you know that already. Um, like the objects that are not strictly defined like the basic um, classes are uh, custom resources. And here we, we've got an image that um, presents um, this kind of CRD. If you ever, if you ever used a tool like Flux, uh, Tecton, 
I don't know, uh, Argo CD, then those are um, Kubernetes operators that introduce on customer source definition, right? And by getting object like Helm release, uh, I don't know what are the objects uh, in Argo CD, but here is an example of Flux. So Flux introduces a couple of different customer source definitions. Uh, those um, custom resources um, represent uh, particular objects that um, defines the problems that you are dealing with. So for instance, Flux is responsible for deploying um, Helm or, or, or for GitOps approach uh, to uh, Kubernetes manifest, right? So if you want to um, deploy uh, an Helm chart, then we just create a custom resource, which is Helm release. And under the hood, um, there is a Kubernetes operator, Flux, that handles uh, that. It ensures that the desired state of the Helm release is achieved, meaning that um, it tries to install Helm chart on your Kubernetes cluster. And as I said, <clears throat> those are, are extensions or those are tools that help you fixing or solving uh, particular problems. Uh, and uh, as you know, automation is like the key point of our work. That's why it fits well to, to this entire ecosystem. What is um, operator framework? Uh, operator framework, as I mentioned, uh, was introduced by CoreOS. It was a startup in the United States that um, introduced uh, operating system specialized for um, containerized workloads. Uh, now this is called Red Hat Container Service or something like that. Anyway, um, they introduced also an operator framework, which is owned by Red Hat right now. And that's an open source toolkit to manage Kubernetes native applications called operations in an effective and automated way. Um, operator, like there are three uh, components of this operator framework. There is an operator SDK, uh, which we are uh, going to cover uh, in this uh, session. Then we, we've got operator lifecycle manager, as I, as I already mentioned, this is something which is not super important if you are going to have different or multiple um, operators or all the logic of the operator is quite complex. You would like to manage dependencies between them and things like that. Mm, then operator lifecycle manager comes into action, but that is not super important if you want to use um, like the basic functionality of operator framework. And finally, there is a service, internet service operator hoop.io that stores and provides a catalog of, um, of Kubernetes operators that, um, that were made by, by this tool. Uh, and this catalog consists like uh, tools like Flux, Argo CD, whatever. There is hundreds of different Kubernetes operator just um, available and ready to use. Uh, when it comes to the main point, uh, operator RSDK um, can be divided into three groups and depends on the group, it provides different capabilities. And the easiest one and the very basic one is a uh, Helm operator SDK. Um, I haven't tried uh, and I don't know exactly um, what are uh, the, limita the limitations of, of it. Um, there is obviously a Go operator SDK, which is uh, from the capabilities perspective, exactly the same as the Ansible one. So uh, it means that you can do exactly the same um, in Ansible operator as well as in Go. Um, and then that's it. A um, couple of words about operator SDK for Ansible. Um, I don't need to explain why it's useful for us. I've already done it. You don't need to um, have programming skills 
um, it fits well because it works uh, in the same way as Kubernetes. So you just need to define um, the state. This is how Kubernetes works. And uh, obviously it's clear for us. Um, and it, um, the, the advantage of that is that you don't need to have knowledge about the Kubernetes API. You just need to know um, the Kubernetes um, Ansible collection. Uh, that is like the core Ansible part or Ansible library uh, in this space. And that's why um, it, it's very useful thanks to this existing skills and, and, and entire ecosystem of Ansible. Finally, before we dive into like the quick start or like practice part, um, some of the use cases, um, there is like no way to, um, to uh, have a Postgres SQL uh, database um, that is built on top of deployment because of the complexity and everything that happens under the hood in, in, uh, in Postgres SQL. So that's a great example of uh, use cases for um, Kubernetes operator. Uh, it includes operation like uh, backup restoration. Um, so for instance, uh, some of databases requires um, some capabilities of backupping the data and not necessarily this should be part of the Kubernetes ideal solution would be to store them in uh, uh, S3. And this is how it can be done uh, by a Kubernetes operator. Another great thing is uh, infrastructure management. This is the uh, item that I uh, faced uh, one or two years ago. So for those who are um, working with AWS, the super weird thing about AWS is the config map AWS out, which uh, maps the roles to the Kubernetes users. Uh, and if you want to add a new user or you need to add a group of users to Kubernetes, then you need to edit this file. Some of you can say that that's a great uh, way of uh, leveraging Terraform. You can just have a Terraform code that will manage this config map. I do not uh, think that there is someone who will say you can do it manually, of course. Um, so uh, I, I had a chance to write an Ansible-based operator to just manage this config map. So it turned out that um, if I want to add a user or something, then I just need to put um, appropriate uh, custom resource to a Git repo and everything happens thanks to Kubernetes operator. That was my case. And the last thing, uh, when it comes to use cases, um, this is quite important right now, at least based from what I see. Uh, and even the customer that I uh, work um, with is very focused on this term, which is infrastructure, um, it, which is the infrastructure that is crowd agnostic. So right now we are migrating from uh, AWS to GCP, but the, the main point here is that they want to be um, cloud locked and they do everything to be cloud agnostic. So. For instance, instead of using um, managed service in, in GCP, they prefer to deploy in on, on Kubernetes. And that's nothing new because when you check out like how uh, Zalando works or how what is the software that they um, that they um, provide in GitHub then you will see that they started to use Postgres SQL as a Kubernetes controller a long time ago. And it, uh, it, it fits well um, to a Kubernetes term, which is that, that Kubernetes is simply a cloud operating system. So if you want to be cloud agnostic, then I think Kubernetes is a great uh, way of, of doing that because um, from one side, uh, you 
an operator don't need to does not need to think about like the complexity of ops or, or everything that must be done to maintain the application. It's the matter of the one single customer source, right? And at the same time, you can achieve some kind of cloud, cloud agnostic, cloud agnostic because of of that. And um, that's why I think Kubernetes operator uh, are important nowadays. And finally, at the end, I will explain it a little bit wider. <clears throat> Let's talk about some uh, practical things. So, uh, what what you need to do to um, to build your first uh, Ansible um, Kubernetes operator. If you are a Mac user, then just you can just use Brew to install operator SDK and some uh, Python libraries dependencies that you that can be useful to um, develop Ansible playbooks or roles on your workstation. Uh, and operator SDK. Uh, helps you in creating or initialization or initializing the uh, new project. Uh, so here you you have uh, here we've got a basic command that you can simply run to uh, create basic skeleton and everything that you need to um, use in order to deploy your first Ansible based operator. And the, the third command just creates an API, uh, including custom resource definition, uh, and it's almost ready to use. Once you've got it, uh, then a couple of words on how it works. So uh, once you execute these commands, then you have a folder. The folder uh, stores, as I said, um, custom resource definition in that case because the demo which you can find on the official website um, explains how to create a memcached a kubernetes operator so um, under the hood it deploys uh, a memcached depending on the values or the custom resource definition you can manage the size of the memcached but um, looking at the content uh, there is a reconciler, uh, which is an Ansible Rural Playbook. It means that um, this Ansible Rural Playbook is uh, executed every time that something um, has happened with like your state. And your state is simply um, the CR, um, the CR that, that you created or we will create soon. And finally, the most critical file is a watches YAM file that um, defines what objects are going to be observed by by the uh, operator so uh, in overall uh, there is a watch file there is a playbook or role that uh, ensures the state and obviously there is an operator SDK binary that uh, makes it uh, for you Let's take a look at um, Ansible operator watches. Um, and let's dive into that because there are a couple of things um, very interesting. So um, as I said, Kubernetes operator um, helps you in um, managing or automating complex applications. So in most cases, that's not a single like the pod running in Kubernetes, but there are bunch of dependent files, configs map and whatever. And um, once you create your operator, then everything that is uh, created as part of it during the reconciliation uh, is part is is owned by the operator, what means that operator uh, does not watch only the tier, but everything that has been created as part of it. So if you create a config map or you create uh, a service, then the change uh, of this uh, object also triggers the reconciliation loop. And the reconciliation loop is simply a playbook or a role that is executed to uh, ensure the state. There are many options to uh, change this behavior. You can um, you can change uh, like the 
um, you can define the blacklist. You can uh, enable like the watchness for other objects. So it's all about the watch YAM file uh, that is scaffolded uh, when you run the operator SDK in its command. Um, the Ansible logic, um, as I said, um, you can play with the Ansible by using uh, Ansible or Kubernetes.core collection. Um, and basically that's very uh, simple thing because uh, every value that is part of your customer source is automatically available in, in a playbook or role. As you can see in this example, um, the size is the variable uh, that uh, custom resource definition provides. Um, and basically that's it. So you, you've got an Ansible playbook role in, in this example, there is a Kubernetes core Kubernetes uh, collection that uh, creates a deployment. So it ensures that the memcached is running and you can define a size of the uh, deployment through a customer resource uh, variable. And finally, if you want to um, deploy or, or um, make it available or running on Kubernetes cluster, then there are a bunch of commands that you can use. Um, those uh, includes make a Docker build, so you can easily build the image um, in, in one command by specifying the um, ECR repo or GCP artifactory registry, it's up to you. Then in one single command, you can make install and make deploy. And um, this will automatically deploy the Kubernetes operator for you. So once you have this operator, then the final step is just to apply the, uh, the sample CR. Um, in, in this case, if we are talking about them or uh, depends on your customer source definition, your own um, manifest. In this case, that's what I I said. Uh, here, here we've got like the size, so this is three, uh, and simply um, the controller once the CR is created ensures that there are three pods of memcached, and you can easily find different variables. Uh, you can easily monitor different CRDs. It's up to you based on what I've said already. But finally, uh, some hints and options. Um, the first thing is what I've already said. Um, you can play before deploying that to Kubernetes cluster, you can play with that on your workstation by leveraging uh, Kubernetes core collection. Uh, and in that way, you can manage the entire uh, Kubernetes lifecycle. Um, there is uh, an extension or there is a way to scrap the Prometheus metrics. So you need, you can see, uh, you can get an insight into the time and frequency of reconciliation. Um, what's reconciliation? Uh, reconciliation is uh, like the soup process of the control loop. And it's very well very common term in, in Kubernetes. And as for me, this is like the last step of ensuring the desired state because uh, the control loop can be a single loop that is some kind of manager, but inside there, there, there can be a bunch of different uh, reconciliations group that ensures the desired state. So here, um, like the tool uh, gives us a way to monitor the, the life cycle of, um, of operator. Mm, there are different ways of uh, changing the verbosity of uh, Kubernetes operator. One is just by applying annotation. And this is what I've already uh, covered. So uh, every resource that is created by the operator is watched, meaning that every update of dependent resource triggers the loop. 
And at the end of this talk, um, this is uh, my opinion about Kubernetes operators, uh, and it's very closely related to some buzzword right now, which is platform engineering. For those who are not familiar with this term, like platform engineering is next step to to, um, to automate the the infrastructure. So the goal is to um not involve like devops engineer in software development process because the let's say devops engineer role is just to build a platform that developer um can use to uh, solve um their issues so for instance uh, if a developer wants to create um if a developer wants to create a kafka topic then it's a matter of one uh single uh file kubernetes manifest that is pushed to git repo um and the answer to uh this platform engineering basic term or word is a cross plane if you have never heard about it this is something like bunch of the tools that help that gives you a way to create some kind of kubernetes operators uh, and thanks to that you can um uh, you can build a control plane tailored to your unique needs without uh, writing um, tricky distributed code. If you have never uh, heard about it, I, I recommend to see because that's the future and it fits well into this um, new body work, which is platform engineering, which in fact is some kind of extension to well-known Kubernetes operators term. I think that's it for today. Thank you for for your um, patience, and uh, maybe now we can talk about it. Maybe you have some questions. Uh, can I just ask it? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that uh, operators are useful for uh, stateful applications. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, and the way uh, I would approach this usually, I would just write my stateful application and deploy it as as a deployment, and that's it. So uh, why should I choose to use uh, like custom resource definitions and uh, this uh, SDKs? Uh, over uh, just regular app? Yeah, it depends on your needs, but because uh, I, I heard a lot of uh, like the cases where uh, you have already a code, but the code is not well prepared for like the Kubernetes. And if it's not, then you can fix like the um, infrastructure issues or the needs of the applications by leveraging the additional logic in, Kuber, in, in uh, Kubernetes operator. That would be the one answer. Uh, and the second, this is basically like the Kubernetes native way. And uh, if you write application from scratch, then you are right. You can introduce the entire logic into your application. But if that is not necessarily a Kubernetes application, then uh, you will face like problems that you can't speaks by a typical stateful set uh, object. So this is mm -hmm. how like Postgres SQL is implemented, right? It's not a typical Kubernetes application. Of course, you can change it. You can introduce a logic that will handle all the things, including clustering and things like that. But if you have never like um, extend it or you, you don't have time, then Kubernetes operator is answer to that. So. It seems that this uh, operator SDK allows to reuse some algorithms, for example, that Kubernetes has already implemented. For, yeah, or for you can you device. can simply extend it. Of course, like stateful set is not a solution for everything, and if there is a lack of a feature or something, then you can go for Kubernetes operator. If and okay. you can do uh, that in Sandy. If, if you don't mind, thank you. If you don't mind, Tomas, I would like also uh, to add uh, the points that you already mentioned in your presentation. Uh, the key point of Kubernetes operators is 
that they allow you to also incorporate some operational activities, like for example, if your application needs to be uh, backed up or restored on a regular way or on a specific cases, you could include that as a custom resource definition into your operator as well. So that uh, as a matter of making a backup will be just to add additional custom resource to your repository. So it's a bit different um approach and a bit different mindset i would say <laughs> that yes. yeah changes everything actually that uh, is uh like well known in the world of devops exactly but in fact this is what i've already said so i i um, like i explain example i explained that in a little bit different from a little bit different side because uh if you have an application that you want to um in which you want to fix a particular problem, then that's another scenario, right? To that uh, Kubernetes operator operator helps in. But yeah, you are fully right. Hi, Tomas. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I have a single question. Uh, unfortunately, um, I was uh, forced to rest our laptop due, due to the update. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, you mentioned it in the presentation. So I wanted to ask, uh, is uh, Memcache defined as part of the operator uh, you worked on? Is the part of uh, the resources, objects uh, that uh, are, um, yeah, the framework for the operator uh, of this uh, Ansible? Basically, deployment, deployment object is part of the um, Kubernetes operator. So by the, mm -hmm. by uh, applying the deployment object, you ensure that the uh, that the application is running on Kubernetes, and then you introduce additional logic around it, which is part of the Kubernetes operator. But when it comes to like the basics and the application, this is the same as for deployment object, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. I, I I was just curious. Um, was Memcache uh, is Memcache managed by you or by the operator, or um, is uh, does it need to be uh, provided as additional deployment in this case? Um, I'm not sure if I get you properly, but I think the mm -hmm. question is um, because of the like uh, encapsulation in Kubernetes yes. operator, right? So uh, we've got this deployment, and we've got custom resource, which is mm -hmm. uh, memcached object. And the question is how those uh, are dependent on each other, because from one point, um, Kubernetes takes care of the deployment object. And also at the same time, it takes care of custom resource, right? And the question is how those two are dependent on each other. Am I right? Yes, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, so uh, in that way, um, there, there is like the same behavior. I mean, the deployment object is still a deployment object, so Kubernetes ensures that this works. But uh, besides that, the additional logic is also uh, take, taken into account. So uh, those two are dependent on each other, but the logic uh, between them is handled by Kubernetes. So there is nothing like you create custom resource and deployment object is not a is not a typical deployment deployment object in kubernetes so those two are dependent each other by work um, in parallel yeah so just if you don't mind again i'll interrupt you a bit uh so uh you could you could imagine that as simple as having additional controller in kubernetes which actually uh, could parse your custom resource object that you're at. And based on that custom resource object properties, it could create uh, the predefined deployments, config maps, secrets, et cetera, that you actually included in your custom resource definition just as, as properties. So basically it adds nothing new to basic Kubernetes logic. It just extends and allows you to actually use it uh, from a single entry point, I would say. So that's my explanation only. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, no problem, thank you.